everybody. Today we do C major. Um, all major scales have the same structure. So it's two tones, a seven tone, three tones and a semitone. Now C major is the only major scale that doesn't have anything as a key signature. It's just all natural notes. Which means that the natural semitones, E, F and B and C, are going to be your semitones. Now, for us that means that, let's start with C. We need a tone, D, a tone, E, E, F against each other, semitone. Continue. is the same notes, but now your octave starts one finger lower. Instead of the open string, which is the same as the fourth finger, we're now starting the second octave on the third finger. So first octave, it was two and three against each other on both strings. Now on the next octave, you're going to have one and two together. Yeah, that's where the semitones are going to be. D, E, that's E, F, semitone, and B, C again, yeah, so that's your two octave scale. Now Charlotte de Berio, he wants you to use as many notes as possible, so all his scales do start on the note they're supposed to, but they don't necessarily end on the note they're supposed to. He always goes up to the fourth finger, or in this case the E, the fourth finger on the highest string. Yeah, just for you to train as many fingers and finger patterns as possible. So, in short, lowest two strings, we're going to have two and three against each other. Highest two strings, we're going to have one and two against each other. And the first finger is always going to be a tone away from the end of the string. So essentially I'm going to use the first finger pattern followed by the second finger pattern and it'll bring us all the way up and down the scale and we're going to do it really slow to begin with. Um, we have two minims for each note so it's four beats per note but it's divided up in two notes of two beats each. We're at 40 Nice and slow, and we're just gradually going to work our way through the entire scale. Now, um, the video asks for the use of both fourth finger and the open string. So once you make it to the G, he first writes fourth finger, followed by an open string, so the next open string. That is to double check your intonation, yeah, to make sure that you arrived at that fourth finger in tune. And if it isn't, I suggest you start back from the beginning until you do arrive on that fourth finger um, in tune. Yeah, that can take a while. It's, if you've done all your finger patterns well, this shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but make sure that you double check. You don't just brush over it. And the way back, when we do the string changes, when you play, he asks for the same. So he asks for, on the way back, for an open A, followed by the same note as a fourth finger. Yeah. But try to float your fingers in the finger pattern that you're going to be using on the next string. So in this case, we are going to have one and two against each other. So, what we do is, we play the open string, we float fingers over the string we're going to use, and as you can see, one and two is against each other, and then you round, you place them all together, and you end up with the same note. Of course, that will require some practice. But once you, definitely if you have already practiced the finger patterns, once you get used to placing several fingers at the same time, in the right place, which is one of the most difficult things of doing scales, is arriving after an open string on that fourth finger. 
once you can achieve that, you can control your finger patterns, even when your fingers aren't there, when they're in the air and then land three, two, three, four fingers at the same time in the right place, pieces become much easier because pieces don't necessarily go one note up, one note down. Yeah? So if you land all four fingers in the, in the right place, it doesn't matter what your next finger, what your next note is going to be because you have four fingers that are already right. And then you just have to go to the right finger and it'll be in tune. Yeah? That's what we aim for when we do scales. Of course, pay attention to that round thumb, relaxed right hand, relaxed shoulders, relaxed thumb here as well. Yeah? Don't squeeze the neck. It will be tiring in the beginning, maybe. The scales are nowhere near as long an exercise as we did in the first two chapters. So I hope I trained you well. But each scale will combine at least two different finger patterns. Unlike the first chapter where each exercise was just one finger pattern, here we're going to have different finger patterns per exercise. And the other difficulty is that you have to land that fourth finger, preferably in tune. So let's give it a go. I'm going to start at 40, two beats per note and each note twice. Ready? So, uh, one, two, three, four, C. <coughs>
So that's the whole C major scale, plus then the additional two notes at the top, the D and the E as well. Um, I will accompany you. There is another video where I record an accompaniment, a little duet. Um, make sure you know this pretty well before you try it, but the accompaniment will help you with intonation, it will help you to play with somebody, it's a, it's more fun. But uh, also it will help you train your ears, and that's, as I've said before, the most important thing. The only real guide you have to know whether you're doing things right is whether you like what you hear. If you're critical, you can tell when you're out of tune, when you don't like the sound, when it scratches, when you're tensing up, you can hear that. Yeah, so this is about training your ears. It The accompaniment will be with a metronome. It will be at the same speeds as I do everything else, but it'll help you pay attention to play with somebody, to adjust yourself to the intonation, to what you hear. Yeah, it makes, in many ways, intonation practice a lot easier. You have something to work with. Yeah, don't just look at your fingers and see whether you land the right finger pattern, but also listen to see if you actually did land the right finger pattern in the right way. Yeah. Okay, anyway, enough talking. We'll do this at 60, 80, and so on. Um, so, I'll see you there. Bye.